Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and a follow-up video to the product review or the unboxing I did on the SQ Lab uh, 312 handlebar. And just a little bit of history, just so you know where where this um, where we are with this. So I ride SQ Lab saddles, and I give I give a lot of demos for that saddle, and they do really well. And I also use their insoles for myself and my bike fitting clients. So when this handlebar came out, I was really excited about it. And I've got mixed opinions about it, but I, I, would, I would venture to say that this is probably already um, getting looked at for a revision, if you will. Okay, so let's look at this bar because there are some interesting things about it, but um, I think, and it's interesting because they're German and I, I do appreciate how well they engineer things. I wonder if they, there's some missed opportunities, I guess I would say. So the top portion of this bar is kind of flat, right? It's got a really good feel to it and it sweeps forward which I like as well because if I'm here in a climbing position the bars are close if I'm reaching out for the um, shifters it's got a little bit of a sweep going out right you can kind of see that doing that so one of the first things that I thought well I think they missed an opportunity is if we look I'm going to take this front wheel off so it's easier for my cameraman to get close enough so if you look underneath here they didn't route the the they didn't do internal cable routing which i thought was hmm i think that's a missed opportunity and while i'm not a big fan of internal cable routing i know that the consumer market is expecting it these days right so you can see here, it's just it it there is a little bit of a a guide, a depression or a guide or a channel, but they don't go inside the handlebar. Also, another thing that I thought was a missed opportunity, I think it's a little too fat this way. So the thickness of the bar, I just think it's just too much, and I don't know. I would have thought that that could have been because it's not aero, which is not a big deal. But I'm just saying as far as consumers, they look for bars that if they're going to have a flat top, possibly you're looking for a an aero profile of the bar itself. Um, comfort wise, the reach here is really short, which I thought was excellent, and especially with so you can see from here to here where the bar uh, starts to make the turn going down, you can see that that reach is, is pretty short. And I, I like that because when you're doing all these hydraulic disc brake bikes, this is really long. This is um, 9,000 Dure, so it's mechanical and it's, it's a small um, handhold area, but on the hydraulic disc brake bikes, this is quite long and the fitting uh, becomes a challenge sometimes with smaller riders because this reach from here to here is much longer on a lot of bars that come OE, original equipment, stocked on a bike. So I've had some fitting challenges with folks where They've come in with really, really short stems, and really what they should have is a shorter reach on the handlebar, but still have that long, longer stem because that longer stem provides more stability on your bike fitting position. When you're riding, you have um, this longer stem and it's reaching out towards the front axle of the bike. Okay, so... The comfort is good, or great, I should say, this part, but then I also feel like it's too thick. And then in the drops, what they did is they have this 
on an angle. Hard to see when it's wrapped, but I will link the video down below of the um, of what this bar looks like when it's uh, without bar tape on it. And it's got a little angle there. And I don't know, I think I like this to be round and let me decide how I put my hands because if you have this on an angle like this, then you're having to find, you know, a position for your hand to be in so you could take advantage of that angled spot. But, I mean, the bar works. I think there might be some revisions to it. And I, let's just take a quick look at this other bar. So this is the Vision bar. This is the 5D bar. And this bar is doing some of the things that I think this bar might want to do. So here, um, this is integrated stem, but let's just look at the underneath part. And you can see that the cabling is going through the bar itself. So that's one thing that I think this, the SQ Lab bar could do. The other is, as you can see, just it's a little bit more arrow shaped. And I like the sweep on this bar as well, right? But I, I don't know. I like this bar better when I put my hands on it because, it, I mean, it's, it's thicker here where the palm goes, but not as thick where the front, on the front part. So if we look at this handhold, and then we come over to this bike, I just feel like it's just too thick. That's just my opinion. Everyone can decide what's more comfortable for them. But, I mean, I think it's a great bar that could be exceptional if they did a few, a few little tweaks. Now, this is their first road handlebar. They make excellent, excellent mountain bike bars. So it's not their that's not, not their first time making a handlebar. It's just the first time on the roadside. So I think that they have an opportunity to make some improvements on this bar. I would expect a, a revision pretty quick because uh, I mean, not that many of these bars are out as far as I know. And I was one of the first. I was a very early adopter. I mean, they'd they'd only been in there. In, in their stock for a week or two uh, landed in the US. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the SQ Lab 312R handlebar. And if you found this information useful or entertaining, please like and subscribe. Please share this video with your friends if someone's interested in a handlebar or they've never heard of SQ Lab. Um, I'll also have some other videos linked down below because their saddles are excellent. Um, I've got so many riders on these SQ Lab saddles. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. And in the meantime, we'll see you up the road.